This episode of Joyride is brought to you by High Bank. High Bank is proud to be a Columbus-based distillery. Look for High Bank Spirits at your local liquor store and favorite bars around the city. By purchasing High Bank Spirits, you're supporting and drinking local. Drink local, drink High Bank. You're listening to Joyride, a podcast for people who love cars. Now sit back and enjoy the ride. Hey everybody, we are back. Thanks for listening to Joyride Podcast. I'm Pete. I'm Rob. We are going to be talking about... All kinds of stuff. Okay. (laughs) So what did you see this week? What have you been reading? What have you been watching? What have you been drooling over? I know our text exchanges have a few few neat things in them. Uh, What what caught your eye? What What are you thinking about? Well, I saw something cool this week. We pulled into a fast food chain. Uh, we were traveling and we just needed to grab a quick bite to eat, run in, Been run there. out real yeah. quick. Mm-hmm. And as we parked, I immediately spotted a car and Sarah, my wife saw me spot this car. It was a sixties Mustang black. I didn't know what year it was from far away. And then as I got up, I was like, I still don't really know. And then the license plate said 65 on it. So Fair guess. Fair yeah. guess. It was a 1965 um, Mustang. It was black. Like I said, I was like drooling all over it. And then I noticed the legend that owns this thing has two baby seats in the back. <laughs> two baby seats. Two, yeah. Two forward facing baby seats. And I said, okay, all right. There aren't even seatbelts in that car, are there? Well, okay, so I'll get to that. So, so anyway, so it's it's this is a beautiful. It's very clean. I don't think sixty three had seatbelts. It's sixty four, sixty five. When, when was that made law? Well, so anyway, so we my- go in. We <laughs> eat our food. We're coming out, and I I get out my camera because I'm like I want to take pictures of this car because I think it's hilarious that this person put kid seats in the back mm-hmm. of their Mustang, of their classic Mustang that is in really nice condition. And they're there. They're loading in, and it's him and his wife, and and their two kids, and they're throwing. I said, "Oh, I had to stop him." I'm like, "Hey, man, like, love your car." Oh, he was like, "Oh, thanks," you know, whatever. And my wife said something about how, you know, I saw it. You know, we came in and blah 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 blah. And I said, "How did you get baby seats in the back of that thing?" You know, he's like, "Oh, he had to do some mods to it to make the baby seats not only fit but be safe and functional." Yeah. And not just like harnesses that will just roll about the cabin, right? <laughs> yeah, and that was it. And he and so we hopped in our car. They hopped in theirs. You know, bye. And then as we were leaving, he he like rolled by me, and I was. <sighs> this was just last week. Yeah. No, it was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So the weather is like starting to turn. Yeah. Like it's cold. Right. Maybe not salt on the road yet, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Way to go, sir. I don't know. I didn't get your name, but uh, <laughs> you are doing life correctly <laughs> that is a pretty cool story though you know we um we share a mutual friend who also puts car seats in his car uh you know somebody with a uh classic uh mercury cougar oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. there's pictures on the internet of his girls in the back with yeah full-blown car seats <laughs> it's the only way to go if you have a car like that i mean why why not it's hilarious because it's a convertible and because the car seats are so large they actually like sit higher than the driver and the passenger. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of like right at eye level with the top of the yeah 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 the windshield. But they love it. They go out on Saturdays and get Starbucks and all kinds of fun stuff. I guess my wife won't let the kids in my car. <laughs> like there's no airbags in there. I was like, nope, just a metal dashboard. Now they used to build cars and just say, "Hopes and dreams keep you alive in this thing." Yeah, my uh, my '63 Impala has a metal dashboard. Now you could get a padded dashboard, but that was an upgrade in '63. <laughs> we didn't want you walking away yeah. from any any accidents in '63. Mm-hmm. So metal dashboard, just yeah, just another piece of sheet metal that they yeah 
They bent in Detroit, I guess. Well, that's cool. That's a good car. So what about you? Do uh, you uh, see anything? or No, nothing like in real life. Okay. As I follow various Instagram pages, and I've been looking at station wagons, right? The, station wagons. The Audi, um, Audi R- RS6. Yes. So what's your, what's your take on, what's your take on station wagons? Yeah, I can see you hesitating. This is, this is exactly where I'm at with it. So I, for forever, I've been hearing from car enthusiasts that hatchbacks and wagons are what you want. Mm-hmm. You get the added space, you get the added practicality of the wagon. It's, you know, it's just as fast as the sedan and whatever. Generally I, speaking, I hate the way they look. <laughs> I don't like hatchback. I don't get it. You know, mm-hmm. it's not. Now, having said that, I could see myself owning a hatchback at some point. Mm-hmm. But I'm having to come around on them. And it's it, a real Euro thing. Yeah. It, it really is. It's um, maybe not just Euro, but like foreign, because you'll see that in the in the Japanese kind of car culture, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Civic hatchbacks mm-hmm. were real popular uh, back in the day. And the, the new ones now are kind of like a weird hybrid like they're calling them hatchbacks but they don't really they look kind of more like sedans you know yeah so they're like they're kind of cheating the system a little bit there i i think i think it's like a so like the the enthusiast in me likes it but i just had this conversation i'd read the text exchange if it didn't bore everybody but 20 minutes of texting back and forth i don't think i could buy one (laughs) i don't think i could pull the trigger and like daily drive a wagon a wagon it's quirky. It's neat. I, I I dig it. I think you know. There's a lot of personality there, but it is a a niche following, and, and I just don't know that I'm like a convert. I really don't. I was thinking of like some really like great station wagons, and not you know the the stuff you, your parents drive around, and you know like junky station wagons, but performance station wagons, and out of all of them. And there's been maybe a handful, right? I, I'm thinking like off the top of my head, the the Cadillac CTV, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that was a detuned Corvette. You know, I, I just can't do it. Like I wanted to, I thought it was cool, and then I saw it, and I was like, oh, "That's not that cool." Like I'd rather just have the regular CTSV, right? And that's the thing that I always struggle with is is if you look at, you know, the the RS six. You know, just came out. You know, you've got the E sixty three. It's another one. The E sixty three has a massive cult following. A massive cult following. And these things are like the performance is nuts. The I mean, six hundred horsepower in a wagon. Yeah, like that's craziness. Four liter V 8s which are huge. Right. And All then, wheel drive. And then putting twin turbos on it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's absolutely insane. The numbers that these things put out are are crazy. Yeah. Crazy. And you got the Porsche makes the. Was it Panamera or whatever? And they they call that a wagon too. I don't. That's just like an ugly four door Porsche. I listen. I'm gonna offend some people real quick, but I get it. I get it. You got to kind of expand your market share, and and but no. And then you do the executive like long wheelbase version, right? It's just a stupid way to spend a hundred and fifty thousand. Right. Exactly. I couldn't. You couldn't put that car like you couldn't put an RS six. And an RS4 or, or an RS3 in front of me, there's I'm not picking the six ever. You know, yeah. same thing with the e, E63. You put a, a C63 right next to it. Mm-hmm. I'm getting in that car. Yeah. Like there's just yeah no way around it. I know, I know. When I see a guy or a girl, <laughs> I just haven't seen a girl yet. But when I see somebody pull up and, and daily drive their Panamera, I think. Huh, you're not rich enough to have like a regular 7 series and then you're like 911 on the weekends? <laughs> you had to combine the two? It's just the way I get through life. Well, and I <laughs> <laughs> no way that it would take me 3 years to earn what one of those cars cost. Yeah, well, and and that's the thing is like I get that the performance is there. I understand it. I I you can't deny the performance values out of all those cars. And they're really nice for what they are. But I'm right there with you. I don't understand how, if you can afford to spend 
fifty grand, one hundred and twenty is you know kind of where they if you just kind of jump into the entry. Yeah, and then you do the executive level, which is the stretch wheelbase. Right. And, yeah. I don't know how you you don't spend you know half that and get like a three thirty five as your. <laughs> You know, as your four seat car, and then you buy you can't your be sports a partner car. Partner at a law firm and drive a three thirty five. <laughs> okay, well, partners at a law firm, they're 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 driving other things. They're you no, know, they're driving they're driving the, the Panamera. The Panamera, yeah. yeah. I you know, I, mean, I just don't know. I, like my dad, you, my dad's always been into station wagons, like in the ugly way. You, you, you remember? Are you familiar with the Buick Roadmaster? No. So it's a, a Chevy GM product. Buick had its version with like fake wood paneling down okay. the side, Ugh. and they had a you know monster V eight that they detuned in it, and my dad loved it. Like he he bought he <laughs> he bought the like cheap Chevy version, and then put put some work into the engine to do it. And that's back when like the the the, the rear seat still like the way back would face face the, the other way. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, those were red. Yeah. Um, my dad, I mean, just did he buy, it. did he, did your father buy a Dodge Magnum? No, but that's where I was going with it. So my brother like got the idiot gene from my dad and <laughs> bought a 5.7 liter supercharged Dodge Magnum. <laughs> and he, anytime somebody says that, I just think of a condom. I first know of all. I'm it's, like, it's horrible. You're driving a penis. Like, you're, I don't know how it looks like a penis. Mm hmm. It's it's named after a product that covers your penis. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. And come and on, he, guys. He bought this car, and at the time, my brother was really, really broke. Um, he's not broke anymore, but he was balling on a budget, as they say. But as we all do, we always like try to get the b biggest car, most car, for whatever we can afford. And Absolutely. He brought home this thing. He's like, Peter, um, what do you think about? Uh, this car, right? And he tells me Dodge Magnum, all the stats and everything. And I was like, okay, what year? And he's like, well, it's used. I'm like, well, how used? 168,000 oh, miles. Oh, you you bought a you bought an American car with 168,000 miles. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yep, he that's puts, a gamble right there. He put so, some money in it. So, how much money after he bought did he put into the car? I think he got the car for like apart. two grand, oh, okay, something okay, really okay. cheap. I think he put another three in it. He was probably all in for six and change. Yeah, ended up selling it for five. I think. Really? Yeah. Um, but that was before he went to the Navy. So he, you know, he basically sold everything he owned and right. Yeah. Left for five years, but um, yeah, <laughs> like and then so the idiot gene morphed into like a Mopar idiot gene, and he's had. A Hellcat and okay, that's not that's that's when the idiot gene turns into like no. idiot genius. Okay? No, I, yes, no. So the Listen, Hellcat's cool, but it's not that cool. The Hellcat is <laughs> the best daily driving. No, okay, well, it's not no. the best because you got to get a demon now. You got to get you got to go for the demon, the red eye. Mm -hmm. Listen, these are the best. If if I could spend fifty thousand dollars on a daily driver. <laughs> There's no doubt, pound for pound, the value's there. But I don't understand what the infatuation is with an 800 horsepower car. Mopar. That you can only get 450 horsepower to the street. Right, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah, it's crazy. What are you doing? He's, he doesn't track it. He doesn't, you know. In fact, he's almost killed himself 100 times in it. That sounds about right. And then he sold it, and um, that's all he's been talking about is getting it again. I'm like, you had it. You had it. You let it go. Yeah. Why do you let it go? No, Why do you get rid of it? You got, I'm a big fan of never rebuying the same car. And I don't know because I haven't done it yet. I still might. But like you had it. It's in the you it's had in that the, experience. Yeah, it's in the Rolodex. Yeah. Go for another one now. I'm trying go, to talk Go him for into the red a, eye this time. I'm trying to talk him into a Chevy SS. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, listen, it's 20 What did he sell the Hellcat for? <sighs> like price wise? No, 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 no. Oh. Like what did he, what, did, what was it, the next car that he got mm. after moving out of the Hellcat? A 2002 Hyundai Sonata. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Yeah. 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 What? So I there's think he, a story. There's definitely a story. I mean, there, there's always but, there's always a story, and it typically involves a girl. But you know, he. I think he has a Mustang. He bought um, like an O2 and O3 GT that was totally gutted and set for a drag strip. Okay. He was running under tens. Whole oh. spraying. I mean, yeah. like. The whole thing. Yeah. Um, and 
Was it? Could he drive it on the street, or did he have to tow it? He did. He okay. drove it on the street, <laughs> yeah. like an idiot. Um, but this was when he was in Virginia. So he was in the Navy. He was stationed in Virginia. He bought it out of one of the Carolinas. I can't remember, and drove it back. And he would he would like spend his weekends throwing you know spray through it down major interstates, like stupid yeah. shit. But he ended up selling that because it wasn't enough power. He was just like. The, the Hellcat, it's a, it's the an un, it was low tens or under tens car, and it was uh, not fast enough for him. Yeah, yeah. So does the Hellcat even run? Hellcat it does, doesn't run faster. It than doesn't. That but stock anyway. Um, he he just liked the number of like eight oh. Was right. it seven oh eight or eight oh? It was seven oh eight. Yeah, because the new red eyes up into eight oh eight. Yeah, or eight, whatever it is. And he found a Hellcat. I don't, I don't know where he had to drive like two days ago. Get it, and um. Maybe it was only a day, whatever. And it was a manual, so he was in love. And sure. He the only way that car should be. Uh, I think sold. when he bought that car, it was it was probably was it a Challenger or Charger? Okay, Challenger, black, triple black. Nice, beautiful car. Um, sounds sounded great, but you know, I mean, tires on that thing was almost two thousand dollars. Yeah. To which he didn't put on. So like, you know, like so you need bald. something to stick yeah, to the yeah, ground. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think when he bought the car, he never told me what he paid for it. But knowing when he bought it and what they were going for at the time, he was probably like low fifties. Yeah, and I think that payment was crazy. He found a girl, he needed an apartment, that kind of stuff, and I think mm. he got out of it. He got out of it. Found an idiot friend of his to, <laughs> to buy it from him. Who, by the way, didn't even know how to drive a stick. Oh boy, had to teach him. And then he got it. he got into a an O three or whatever. I think he Hyundai always had Sonata it. Or, he had oh, like he a, had, he had like a ninety seven Civic, and okay. every, he always had a daily, and it was always a piece. I'm like, I remember visiting him in Virginia, and he had a ninety seven Civic that I swear was a flood car, but he told me <laughs> it wasn't. And you would have to like, and this is an exaggeration, but you would have to like. Take your feet and shuffle them back and forth on the car on the floor mats to build up static electricity to like zap the like ignition. Oh like my you gosh. need it like it was such a janky piece of shit. Uh you know, I mean like it was it was hilarious. He's like, Hold on, hold on, hold on. And <laughs> And, and I was like, what? Because I went to like reach and put on my seatbelt when I first got in. He's like, wait. He like hit the steering column. Just like <clears throat> And then he goes, okay. And he turned the key and it's You got to hit the steering column before was, the thing would start yeah, it up. It was weird. It was so oh weird. Oh, my gosh. Couldn't put the windows down because. <laughs> well, why would you want to do that? And his dash was lit up. Like every every indicator light was on. <laughs> Just fine. He's like, I can't kill the thing. I was like, oh, okay. All right. Well, so his daily is always a huge piece, you know, just, just awful. But I don't, I don't agree with that, <laughs> that logic. I, I still feel like, like if you're going to have, if you have the financial ability to have more than one car and you're going to have your weekender, your special, you know, keep in the garage, I won't take it out if it's raining or, you know, salt, whatever. And you're going to have your fun car and you want your daily. I, I don't, I don't subscribe to the the thing that where the daily's got to be a Hyundai Sonata. Like I don't think you need to have a boring daily. Like go get a Civic SI or like a GTI or something that's still it, it has you know, nothing something. to do with boring. It's all about It's the, all money. It's, it's all, all money. Its yeah. All right. I bought it for 800. It takes $20 <laughs> in gas and a quart of oil every third week. Like yeah, I mean if that if that helps fund the fun car then I think that's I, what I it is. I can't argue with that. Cuz I make though. fun of him all the time, but he He's like afraid to have a nice daily. He's got this stupid trophy car in in a in a storage locker, and then he has this Hyundai Sonata that you swear somebody died in the back seat. It's like, currently dead back there. Oh, that's a long way around D Lake Station Way. <laughs> I, you know, I like when I go for my next car. Like I'm going to look at a couple of hatchbacks probably, just to see what they're like. You know, I'm gonna test drive. You waste your time. You won't like them. a golf R. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's like ah, or we'll see. Right? I if know. Audi didn't stop making their stupid cars in manual, because that's the thing that I don't understand. Why is the golf R? It, you can still get the golf R in manual. You can get a double clutch or whatever they're calling their flappy paddle. Mm-hmm. They're owned by Audi. Mm-hmm. 
why doesn't the why can't you get the S4 or the S5 in a manual just like you can with the Golf R? It's the performance variance, you know, like yeah. you used to be able to, you can't now. So those cars are off the table for me. Yeah. No, I don't I I, I wish I could tell you. I, I like people I think decisions are made, which is really ironic because car culture is so strong and entire industries are built around it. Like aftermarket parts for cars as a, as as a, like an investment like not a good one right it's right. very very cyclical but there is an emphatic you know customer base and you have these major major car companies that basically have cornered the market right i mean the barriers to entry to starting a car company are so massive that they literally don't have to worry about misstepping right in, in, in any real way yeah um, and I'm, I'm being over simplifying, you know, their industry to, to a large extent. But my point really that I'm trying to make is that they could do this and people would buy it. And the reason they don't, I just doesn't make. I, 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 I don't believe them when they say that the take numbers weren't high enough. Yeah. You're telling me how, how different. I mean, like I, I'm not an engineer. Right. Right. Full, you know, full disclosure. You're telling me you can't design a car in a way that makes that more financially easy to do you know what i mean to where like i just think it's it's either laziness or it's, corporate money crunchers are like hey exactly we're gonna save is. you know mm-hmm. four million dollars if we don't offer this anymore who know whatever the cost is right yeah or it'll cost us four million more dollars to like shut down the line and move assembly to a manual transmission right so whatever. i just i think that the car the car manufacturers need to take a look at I feel like for, and we maybe we're getting out of it now, but I feel like for the longest time, the auto manufacturers are trying to make cars that appeal to the broadest market they possibly can. Mm-hmm. And so they end up with these vanilla cars that sort of all look and sound alike. Um, and what they really should be doing is trying to figure out how to make an affordable car that's fun and engaging to drive because that will make people want to buy it think about this though and this will make you sad (laughs) depressing now for our listeners 15 years from now when the entire market's ev right is there going to be a fun and engaging car to drive what are you going to shift in an electric car i mean the new electric cars that are coming out are awesome i mean you've seen have you seen the new porsche i have yeah that thing is insanity i think it's awesome as a standalone like Vehicle. I don't think it's awesome as a replacement. No, I don't think. You so know either. what I mean. And I think that's that's unfortunate that that you know, we're nobody's going to ask me. I mean, the the industry's going there whether we like it or not. Yeah. But you know, like I don't care how fast an electric car is. I, I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be cool. It put a smile on my face, and I'll never feel anything so you know fast in my life. But there is something engaging. On a level, uh, uh, you know, unmatched by anything else, especially EV stuff, by like the analog nature of you I know, think you will still find, shit around. Yeah, I know. I, th- I still think you will find um, people like a Tesla that you know, not not saying them they're too busy making horrible looking pickup trucks, <laughs> but um, they're never gonna make that car. They uh, no, they're not. Um, but I feel like there would be a company that would that, that would come out of the woodwork because look, the the audio enthusiast is a huge market. We're a huge of swath of people of that um, we need, like you said, analog stuff. We need stuff shaking around. We need to be able to feel that. And there's got to be a way to connect electric motors and the batteries and everything like that, and still keep some of the you know, analog nature of cars. There has to be, and it, it's going to be, it's either going to be Porsche or Mer- it's not going to be Mercedes. It's either going to be Porsche or it's going to be, a you know, some other manufacturer that is not around right now that comes up, that sees as soon as these cars, but what if you're not allowed to make the emissions, you know, like what if, what oh, if- I'm, I'm saying it'll still be an electric car. It'll oh, just okay. have analog parts. Okay. That act as like an interface Wait. to the electric stuff. I think that would make me roll over in my grave if I were dead. <laughs> well, would you rather have that or nothing? Yeah, I don't know. That's a really good question. I don't know. I guess I'd have to see how it felt and worked. Yeah. But if I 
if I if subconsciously or consciously like n- understood and knew that I wasn't propelling that car forward, I was just <laughs> like a, like a kid with a rattle or something. I don't know. Or like it one is of those tough because fake as, steering wheels. As somebody who I play guitar, I have used several different digital amp modelers, which basically is just a fancy way of saying computer generated sound, right? Mm-hmm. I plug my my guitar into my computer and my computer makes guitar sounds back at me. And I've used several different variations of that. I've used um, third party ones where they're like a, a rack based unit. And there is always this thing in my head that I know that's not real. Mm-hmm. I know it's not. Mm-hmm. I know it's just ones and zeros. Yeah. It's not a real thing. And when I plug into a real amplifier mm-hmm. and I crank that thing up mm-hmm. and I can feel it, I can feel mm-hmm. the air coming right. off of the speakers <laughs> yes. and I know it's real. Yeah. I can plug my my digital stuff into speakers and have it come out, but there's just this thing this 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 bug in my head that I know that it's fake. Now you can do blind taste. You can do blind you know things, and you'll get fooled. But the moment that veil is lifted, and yeah. you know the thing that you're yeah. playing is fake, hundred percent, it's over. It's ruined now. That's why, like, I never understood. I mean, same analogy, right? Different instrument. What's better, a piano, a baby grand, right, or a Yamaha keyboard? <laughs> Right. No, it's exactly correct. You could do way more on the Yamaha, uh, you and could it do sounds, way more. You could you sounds could, fine. Sounds fine. You could load in thousands of different sound yeah. modules into that thing. You but know. I tell you what, nothing, nothing, nothing compares to like Steinway. Baby, no, no. Shout out Steinway. I'm telling you, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm equal parts like anxious and equal parts interested because and worried. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really. I, I don't know if people like you and I are going to be able to sit down and talk about cars that we want in the same way. I don't know if I want them. I don't know if, you know, at that point, give me autonomous vehicles. I don't, I don't care if I can't drive it. I don't. God, that makes me sad. You know to what I mean? About, dude. If whatever, you know, I don't want to deal with it. So you brought up the Tesla truck. I got to ask. I mean, I think everybody has oh talked about this at this point. So I don't know what we add to the conversation other than what do you think? I think that um, Elon Musk needs to work on his presentation skills. Did you watch that <laughs> train wreck of a presentation? I, I did. I did. That Listen, Elon, because I know you're listening to our podcast. <laughs> you're a genius, right? That is undeniable. You, you, you are a very, very smart man. You're a very smart businessman. Way smarter than I'll ever be. But you got to work on your presentation skills, homie. Mm-hmm. Like, like yeah. you are up there. You, you Soft look, skills. You looked and sounded real nervous, man. Yeah. And you are, you know. He knew it was a lie. He knew. He knew it was a lie. They're not building that car. That car is so ugly, so incredibly ugly. He went up there. He threw a bunch of <laughs> stats. I can go. Listen, I can take my my Honda Odyssey van and I can go park it in an assembly room yeah. and I can pull up a PowerPoint and tell you it's got 12,000 horsepower yeah. and then it'll, it, it can drive, you know, through a lake yeah. on my PowerPoint. But yeah. if I don't go, if I don't do it, if I don't show you doing it, then it doesn't matter. And that's all that presentation was, this was is, a bunch of numbers mm-hmm. on a screen to get a bunch of hype going. That thing, look, there are parts of the Tesla truck that are cool. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying I've talked to several people about this thing. Mm-hmm. There are people telling me they want one. I know. Here's my here's my thought on that. And it's not an original thought. So please don't blow me up in the comments about me listening to other people and regurgitating. But if you think about Tesla as a car company, it's not it's 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 not really like it doesn't operate like a car company does. Yeah. Not not a traditional Detroit 3, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it far more operates and runs as a tech company, and this isn't just you know what what Talking Heads are saying. Like when they started, you know it was their it was their you know uh, what do they call what do they call the thing on your crest like it mission was, statement. Yeah, I mean it was it was, the, it was their mandate. You know we're, we're we're smarter than Detroit. We're gonna we're not a car company. We're a tech company. We're gonna run it and think and innovate and but and there's a lot that that. It's interesting about that value yeah, proposition. I think it's I think it's a good way to attack an industry that is, you know, 
there are some arguments to say it's stacked it yeah. a little bit. You know, the problem though is that you cannot sell a Cybertruck the same way you sell a fucking iPhone. Right. <laughs> you, you cannot hype and have an unveil party and build you know intrigue and and early adoption you know uh, uh, of your core base. And, it's not like that. Yeah. You can't do that. To put a truck in front of us, which I truly believe they aren't going to be able to make. No, there's no way that that thing. And then say, look at all the buzz is generated. Have your stock price spike because of the buzz. And, and, and to take pre orders? Did you see what he tweeted? Like 200 and. 250K? Yeah. 250,000. So that's people. the number amount of people. Mm hmm. That all paid a hundred dollars. That's what I was gonna say. It's like a hundred bucks, right? Twenty five million dollars. So here's here's my thought on that. <laughs> Being in finance and understanding my my thought is the way you the way you raise money and the way you generate investor interest is is showing demand, right? Proof of concept. If right. you were trying to get a business started and you went to a venture capital fund, they would ask you, What what have you sold? What's your what's your pre-orders like? What's your you know what's your trajectory? What are you basing that off of? I mean, we all seen Shark Tank, right? I mean, it's, I'm not making anything up here. So I think it's a disingenuous way to say, look at the demand. Right. Now we need to go raise some more money to build this stupid fucking truck oh that nobody God. really. And for a hundred bucks, like here, here, I'll, I'll give you a hundred dollars. Right? Sure, yeah. I want one. Yeah, yeah. Put me on the list. I mean, right. the only cool thing about that truck was the bed that lowered out the back. That was it. That was the only thing that that... Well, no, that's not true. So the funny thing was, I'm getting back to your presentation skills, Elon. There were so many times during that presentation where he rattles off some sort of feature and he waits for applause and yeah. there's no applause because no. you're in a room full of tech people, yeah, not automotive enthusiasts, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so he's, he's, he, he puts up numbers on the board mm -hmm. that are like, oh, that's that's pretty impressive, but... No, nobody, and he, so he's expecting, you know, applause or whatever, and there none comes. One of the cool things that 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 truck allegedly, and I'm using air quotes, can do is it can not only does it adjust ride height, but it also adjusts the dampers, so you can set them individually, so you can get a really low ride height mm -hmm. and set the dampers to be either stiff or soft, or you can set the ride height to be higher, so you get, you know, more clearance or whatever. And I thought that was kind of cool, but that that statement got no applause from well, anybody when he the, said it. That's not that's not a new thing. No, it's not. But I, people I, I, people with jeeps have been doing that right. for forty fucking years. I mean, like I, he he goes to throw the you know they they bring the the sledgehammer out that's not an actual sledgehammer, right. and he like you're you're expecting him to really Dead dent the hell like, yeah. out of that first door, yeah. and it doesn't really do much to that door really when you think about like a dent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really do much, and then it doesn't do anything to the test. Like, cause you can kind of tell the guy's sort of like half swinging it, but it's a rubber hammer. Yeah. Like it's not, no. it's not a sledgehammer. It's a hammer you use like, like similar to like when you do woodwork around your house yes. and you put trim in like, yeah. Or a wood floor, like you use a, a, a rubber mallet so that you don't dent anything. <laughs> so there's that. There's the, there's the thing where they bring out the glass marbles to test the shatterproof glass mm -hmm. and they drop it on the one glass panel. And then when they go to do it to the actual freaking truck, it, 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 it shatters the windows like mm -hmm. the windows. It doesn't go all the way through, but they both totally mm -hmm. smashes both windows. And the guy doesn't even throw the thing very hard. So mm -hmm. it's clear to me that like, dude, this is an obvious scam. Yeah. Like you have taken... I mean, they said that they gave people rides around in it, but you've taken, it's probably a Model 3 yeah. or a Model S that mm -hmm. they literally just put a new thing on top, on top of, of yeah. to generate some hype, to yeah. generate some, you know, yeah. whatever. And that's why it looks so goofy. It's, it's exactly right. Because they're like, hey, it doesn't have to look good. We're just going to throw the shell on, you know, on this other car. The thing is, is like people have for a long time, concept cars right I mean, oh that, yeah every not, everybody yeah. comes out with a concept car every every couple of years call it a concept car the conversation is totally different yes. you know i'm not i'm not mad at it at all to call it something that you can put into production i'm like there's right. no way to there's say no way. that you can put in an order and it's going to be what it did when did he 2021 20, yeah and no way and the numbers are all theoretical like right. I, I get that you can do math really really well but you're not making any of this stuff and so like when you think about the numbers so i was i was looking the only thing that was really impressive to me was the payload 
and and if I understand it correctly, towing capacity is different than payload, and right. it's different than, than than actual hitch weight as well. But to tow something is X, and that's typically you know in in a in a small truck, you know, fifteen hundred or Ford F one fifty between 10 and 12,000 pounds to tow, right? Payload is how how loaded down your your truck can be right. safely, right? And those numbers are pretty low. In fact, I, I was I was looking at my GMC like it's surprising you put four people in that truck, four big boys like me, two and a quarter. Eh, I wish I was two and a quarter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you put four of them in there plus their hunting gear, right? Or their or their quad and you're like a lot of people are rolling around 70 miles an hour down the expressway overloaded. Yeah. Um, so the payload on this thing was, was actually impressive. But again, if it's true, if it's the true. towing capacity wasn't that amazing. I mean, for the price, what did, what did he say? It was like 70K? It, no, it was less than that. It was uh, it was like 39 or something starting. Oh, no, there's no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the no. lowest, there's three models. The lowest one was like. I'm going to pull it up. I think I it's say closer it was, to seventy. I think it was. Well, I think the highest end one is. I think the highest one was like seventy. I want to say the lowest end was like thirty nine, thirty six, maybe. You're right, forty thousand. Yeah. Wait, version of the truck. A version that'll start at forty. And it's got a you know it's got a smaller range, smaller towing. You know, it's just less powerful overall. So right. the one you can buy for forty is got the specs at least. If if, if he's not lying. Which he is. Which he is. It's got the same, like, you could tow the same amount as, like, a Ford Explorer. You know, I mean, like, think yeah. of think of a Toyota Ford. And that's runner. what he said in, in his press conference is they were aiming to make a car that spec for spec fought with, you know, your average Ford F-150. But I think they're actually, like, he the, the specs on the on the biggest one, the two batteries, 500-mile range, and the 14,000 pounds, yeah. right? You're you're not competing with your heavy duties, your four two fifties and three fifties, right? Your twenty five hundreds and thirty five hundreds on the Chevy side, because you're towing fourteen thousand pounds. I mean, if you look at a heavy duty truck, yeah, and then you throw the dually, you know, the dually package on it and everything, you can get into those trucks for sixty five, sixty eight, and his battery truck comes in at seventy. Well, but he's also saying that cost of you run it, you know, you don't need oil changes, you don't fill it up at gas stations. Electric's always going to be cheaper to to buy than gas, so that's his argument. But maybe I, I still think there's so much about this that is just scream scam at me. You've got the yeah. pre-orders, you've got the glass that shatters that wasn't supposed to shatter. Mm -hmm. You've got the the stupid sledgehammer that's not an actual sledgehammer. You've got the towing contest and I'm sure you heard about that oh, where yeah. you there was a there's a really good video online that debunks the the towing thing. Um, and I think it's it's the guy over at Engineering Explained has uh, a really good video. I did video. hear about that. Yeah. Yeah, and so he he sort of goes through because you can see on the video that the the Ford that the Cybertruck is towing is actually just a two-wheel drive car. And because it's a two-wheel drive car, it, it sets its load in a certain way when it's trying to drive. Yeah. And it totally disbalances the, the car. And, yeah. and, and um, like, if it had been a four-wheel drive car, it would be different. That's why this guy's a nut, man. Right. I yeah, mean, this that's guy's crazy. Like, why He's would just you do crazy. that? Right. So that's, that's the thing is you, you add all these things up. And, it, and to me, it's just like it's a scam. It looks like... The, the the you take all that away and you just take a, and you look at what it looks like it looks like like an old nintendo car because there's like because the graphics. six polygons on it now i'm going to make an analogy that nobody is going to understand right now but it's fine um because i'm an i'm a, an animator for a living it looks like a low poly model of a truck what that is is a low poly version of something. When you, when anytime you see anything out in a CG movie that's computer generated, all the things are made up of polygons. They're little squares, and there's millions of them that cover, you know, your face or you know if they're modeling a car that or a spaceship or whatever they're putting in a shot. There's millions and millions of these polygons um, that that it take to make something look real. And what a common practice for animators is, is you have your super high poly version of it. Which is like a finished product. That's the finish yeah. that's got all the textures and everything on it. And the problem is, is those things 
are really hard to render on the computer. They take you know days to render a frame yeah. of of a, a super high. Poly so typically, thing. people will storyboard in like a very watered down version, right. or like so, a, and that's a low poly. A low so poly, you'll take yeah. something that's you know you know two hundred million polygons, and they'll <laughs> render it down to something that's that's you know sixty, <laughs> yeah. and it looks like a piece of crap. But, but you can work with it. You can yeah. get your animation right you on your, that, yeah, and then you just right, yeah, swap. Yeah the model out for the high poly model and you know boom you're done yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it looks like a low poly model of a truck that the that the designers that. forgot to swip to swap out <laughs> yeah. before they hit print you know i honestly thought when i my first gut reaction before i even heard the volume on the tv because we got like a whole like wall of tv monitors at work and this was on and everything's closed caption so i wasn't reading it i was just watching it. i was like that son of a bitch is trying to get us like comfortable with like space travel by building a Mars <laughs> rover version. Like, you know what I mean? Like it looks like a Mars rover. It looks rover, like a Mars rover. It absolutely does. And he, you know, coincidentally owns a, a commercial space flight company. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm never, ne- I don't like flying to Florida, let alone right. Mars. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. doing that. No, I'm not doing that either. Well, and just, you know, just the thing of like, we just gave the guy a, a, a zero interest, twenty five million dollar loan. Yeah, right. Yeah, over something that arguably he could put that whole presentation together in a week. Mm-hmm. Right. He has the ability to take a Model Three or a Model S or whatever, pick your poison, mm-hmm. and take the shell off the top of it and slap something all because it's just all electric. Mm-hmm. It's way easier to do Same than platform, a yeah. mechanical mm-hmm. than, a, than when you have to have an engine and everything. Suspension and <clears> mechanics, <throat> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's super easy to do. Literally within a week, they could mock this thing up and drop a shell on. You know, yeah. stop assembly because they're Tesla and they can just say whatever. We're Tesla mm-hmm. and mock this thing up real quick and and go out and you know shoot some videos and boom you got your presentation like literally a, a week they could do this have you ever have you ever seen um i don't even know who the girl is maybe not necessarily but you get you get my point no absolutely yeah. i get your point I, I i think no time at all and they just got a 25 million dollar interest zero and, and that was just what he tweeted like yeah who, that that's been a little bit of time who knows what the actual number is now yep. and i get that it's refundable and whatever but i don't think it is I, I think it's non refundable. It could be. I, I I had heard that it was refundable, but either way, it doesn't matter because that. And I get that, like to Tesla, that's probably just a little drop in the bucket. But to your no. point earlier, it, it it provides interest. It it's, shows it's, their investors that hey, look, there's demand here for this. Yeah. You know, and by making it that, the other thing is that's is what's like, really upsetting. It's manipulation of investment capital because. Yeah. The twenty five million doesn't do shit for them. I, I mean, they'll burn twenty five million in two days. Right. Like, yeah. Their cash burns crazy, but it shows. You know, if presented that way, it could generate you know a stronger investor interest or continued investor interest. Well, and I wonder if it's a way to to allow their manufacturing process to be cheaper because if you look at the way that thing is built, it's straight planes. Ding 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 ding. If you look at a normal Tesla, all the bodywork is smooth and it's angled and there's lots to it. But that thing is just literally like, you know, like a six-year-old just drew a bunch of yeah. straight lines on something. I mean, it's got to be way cheaper to put something like that together than, you know, That's true. their normal car. So I wonder if they're trying, if they're also trying to get people comfortable with that sort of design language to make mm. their manufacturing process cheaper, cheaper so that they make more money per unit. On the vehicle. That's an interesting thought. But here's, mark my words, three years from now, Ford, you know, Dodge, they're all going to have trucks with that lift gate that angles down. Of course. They're, that Everybody's going to steal that. Well, and I, I think it's, it's interesting to give Ford and Chevy, you know, a, a reason to rethink how they do things, but to completely think you can replace them. With aspirational thoughts. I mean, these guys have been making trucks for 70 years. Yeah. Right? I mean, you got to give them a little respect. I mean, they know how to put together a car and to make it profitable. I mean. I appreciate Tesla as a company for what it does, you know, for being a disruptor and for, you know, getting manufacturers to think differently. I mean, think mm-hmm. about before there were Teslas, how many high-performance electric cars there were. None. 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 And now you look at 
we didn't even have a full electric car before. I mean, no. did we? I mean, it was like a no, high, it, was it was all hybrid, hybrid stuff, right? I think yeah. two cylinder. Maybe I don't know when the Nissan Leaf came out because that was full. I think Prius was. Well, no, the Prius was a. It was a hybrid at first, yeah, too. yeah. But so I. But now you know everybody's doing super crazy hyper cars that are all electric because the torque is instantaneous. Mm -hmm. So that's been so that I can appreciate as an enthusiast mm -hmm. that. What company like Tesla comes along and it pushes us forward. It and, moves it moves the industry forward. Right. right. And that I get. I understand that. And but, I do appreciate them for that. Uh stunts like the unveiling of this truck. I mean, it takes all that away. Yeah. All that goodwill is gone because I don't know that it's all gone, I, it, but it's it, definitely no, it's not all like gone, I'm not, you know, I think I think rushing out to put shit. any money in his pocket. No. No. I mean he can't. I mean, and we don't even know what the warranty side of this stuff is, right? I mean, we've had Model S's out for almost nine years. Right. Is it nine years? When did the first one come out? Ten? Maybe. Nine? Ten, yeah, eleven? Know. And you don't see a lot of those early models. People, a lot of people have traded them in for the newer ones. People don't buy Toyota Priuses because of the battery issues, right? Right. What do you do with a 10-year-old Tesla? I don't know. Right. How yeah. Do you, the, how do you fix a a battery like that i don't know that you can i mean i'm not super familiar with you know the, the, the second thing i thought after i thought oh this has well i can't swear i don't want to swear i can swear i don't you want can to fucking say whatever you want <laughs> the second thing i thought after the stupid mars rover thing was have you ever seen so for a while i got into this rabbit hole on youtube about like fixing and like restoring and like totally modifying cars okay have you ever seen this girl named, I think her name's Simone, Simon, Simone, something? Uh -uh. She took a Model 3 and turned it into a truck. Basically, I've heard about this. I've so, heard about this. I haven't, I haven't seen the video. Do you remember though. the Subaru um, Baja? Subaru yes. Baja? So yeah. it was like a car with a little truck bed, which was like a throw throwback to an El Camino. So she made, this, she made this thing where her and her friends, they're all pretty decent engineers and like fabricators, Took a Model Three and chopped the top and stretched it and made made it a truck. They called it Truckula. Truckula. Yeah. You have a you have a photo of Truckula. Oh yeah. And you know if you watched like there's like four. Or is five. she standing in like a seam or is there like this, did they do a good job on the bodywork there? Is she you know um, they she's kind of standing. They didn't do a great job with the bodywork. I'm gonna be honest with you. If you watch the video series and I I watched them all and they're long. You can tell, like, to finish the car, they, like, duct tape some of the, you know, plastic back together on the inside, right? They, they're great fabricators and welders, but they're not great finishers. It's like, I can frame a wall and drywall it, but you don't want me putting your crown molding on. I think she did a better job with that. She absolutely did. Yeah. Then Simone Gertz, G-I-E-R-T-Z. Nice job, Simone and, and yeah. company, for... Yeah turning the tesla into a better looking truck well, than elon could <laughs> apparently i'm not the only one that says 10.25 million views <laughs> oh goodness almost half a million likes yeah so i'm not telling you guys anything you probably haven't already seen no i like hers a lot better son of a bitch <laughs> i'm just so mad that he turned it into such a cheap because i love the unveiling process. I love the concept pro process. You know what I mean? Like, I love the hype. I love the auto shows. I know they're dying. They don't do what they used to do. No, I totally agree. But I when think you, there's something when to you that. cheapen it with lies yes. and, and, and fabrications and half truths. <sighs> and know. even if like, look, Elon is smart enough to know that that would come across the way it did. You think? Cause he still did it. I know. Does that say something even worse about the company? Like, I sure hope not. I know. Because I'm thinking, I'm sitting there the whole time thinking, Jesus, this is cheesy. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're going to test all this stuff, don't bring me out a, f a floating door. Don't bring me out some glass panel that's not... Bring me out another truck. Mm -hmm. Take the badges off of it so that, you know, but we know it's a Chevy or a Dodge or whatever it is. Bring me out another truck. Yeah. And smash the hell out of that and throw your marble, your metal marble through that one. Yeah. Do all the tests to that and then do all of your tests to your car, right? Yeah. And the funny thing is, is that it didn't work, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the best part, right? There's another company uh, that makes an electric truck and has been doing it exclusively for three, four years. Um, I, I sent it to a friend of ours 
because I really I really liked it at the time. I, uh, Rivian, Revivian, R. I have not heard of this. Well, and they are exclusively building trucks. Now that looks like a proper truck. It doesn't look bad. I, it, well, those headlights look bad. Let's be real. Mm. I mean, compared to the other one we just talked if about this, for 40 minutes. Listen, all they have to do is take these headlights away and make this bar that goes across like a big LED mm-hmm. headlight, like a single headlight, or maybe only parts of it light up. That would be awesome. Integrate I don't know your if headlights these are, into that design. I don't know if these are in production yet. Those headlights look weird. I can't I can't get down with those headlights. But everything else, it looks like a like a Jeep Grand Cherokee kind of. I mean, know? It, it's... It's a legit truck, and it looks like a truck. I mean, it, yeah. Listen, you're not gonna get a bunch of people that love Ford and Chevy to like switch over by making some spaceship looking S- thing. Spacey looking. There's no way that thing. I will eat a shoe if that Cybertruck comes out and looks just the way it looks there. There's no way. Let's see. Up to 400 miles, zero to 60 in three seconds. Quad motor system. Yeah, those are all fairly. I mean, the the highest end Tesla's got the 500 mile range, but up to 750 horsepower, max towing 11,000 pounds. Woo! 700 horsepower. Yeah, I'm telling Yikes. you, this thing is far superior. R I V I A N, Rivian. Rivian, and it sounds cooler too. Cybertruck. <laughs> yeah, like when I hear Cybertruck, I think of cyber sex and like <laughs> like back in '99. Like, you know, like, <laughs> oh, you want a cyber? Like what? What what is Cyber? Is that a cool name now? I don't. I didn't think so. No. Look it, at the S on that. It was thing. cool on. Hey, see that looks nice. Right. That looks. See the how they integrated the tail lights. It's all that one bar. Mm-hmm. Just do that for the headlights mm-hmm. all the way around the front. It would be awesome. I'm awesome. You. Yeah, that's great. I would I would get one of those. Now these aren't cheap either, though. I I remember I remember sending it. What's to the MSRP front of on that guy? I don't know. I think it was like fifty fifty five when I when I last checked it, and it's been been a long time i mean look at that maybe those aren't the headlights that are up front though maybe those are like the high beams or something they those little be. those little slits there they i'm could curious be. about it i mean interior yeah, looks nice interior is beautiful i would as a gmc sierra owner buy that twice before <laughs> i bought that thing that he rolled out so bad looking that's disappointing shame on you elon Starting at 69. 69. Okay. Well, so, you know, it's yeah. starting at the same price point as the highest end model of, of the Cybertruck. And, you know, if you want all the spreadsheet numbers, you're going to go for that one anyway. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I can't afford a $70,000. No, me neither. But, but people can. And they shouldn't buy that. Yeah. Go buy a Revi- What was the name? Rivian. Uh, Rivian. Rivian. I think I'm saying that right. Go buy a Rivian. What's the website? What's the URL? Uh, Rivian.com. R-I-V-I-A. No, R-I-V-I-A-N.com. Rivian.com. Go buy yourself a proper Mm -hmm. electric pickup truck that actually works. And you could actually buy it today. It seems like you can. And not allegedly buy it in two years. They're building batteries in Irvine. Their technology and data science is out of San Jose. Power conversion is coming out of Carson. Design and engineering. This is why I brought this up. Michigan. Oh. So this is how I got turned on to these people. And just reading that made made it click in my head. They have taken the opposite approach. So remember when I was telling you how Elon like made it a cornerstone that they were a tech company, not a car company? Right. And how I thought that that was a mistake because there's a lot of value in what Detroit has done. Yeah. These people have purposely partnered with Detroit. With traditional American car manufacturing yeah, to take the best that is assembly, project management, planning, right? Like all that stuff, sourcing, and use that as a foundation to innovate on top of. Love that. Where Tesla has said, you know, middle finger to the world, we're going to do it our own way. Right. We're going to figure it out. And, on, and whatever we figure out will be better than what's going on now. And I think that's really, I mean, one, that's rude. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think you know, anytime somebody comes out with the bravado that isn't respectful of what's come before them, it can be disastrous. I don't think it's insurmountable. No, but, it's an, and certainly it's an approach that people do. But. Well, sure, yeah. And when it works, you look like a genius, yeah. right? And it builds, you know, cachet and, and, and uh, you know, godlike stature. But when it doesn't, you look like an ignorant fool. Yeah. And 
I think, you know, for as smart as those people are, it shouldn't be that big of a stretch to think, hey, maybe there's something over the last seven decades of car manufacturing we could take from. That we could learn from. Yeah. Yeah. It could just be the persona of what Tesla is trying to do. It, you know, I'm sure they've done their proper research and whatever. But yeah, when I hear that that car is, is manufactured in Michigan. It's actually manufactured in Illinois. There you go. Uh, it's it's designed and engineered in Michigan. Okay. but uh, And there's a little button that says join the team. I'm going to actually apply for a job while we're there. Okay, yeah. here, here we go. All I right. don't know what I'm qualified to do, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but props to them. I... I, I that's that's awesome and i i really as an auto enthusiast i think that's the future i mm-hmm. think i think little companies mm-hmm. that can come up and say hey we can do one thing really well mm-hmm. i think there's definitely room in the car echelon for mm-hmm. that for mm-hmm. for companies that say hey we're not going to try to appeal to everyone mm-hmm. if you want an electric truck which is a niche market yeah come to us and we're going to do that and we're going to do that really well and we're going to keep our costs down because we're only making one thing we're going to keep our manufacturing costs down our marketing costs down because we don't have to market to 80 year old retirees and new drivers and no it's if you want a specific thing come to us we'll do it i mean singer's doing the same thing yeah but for rich people who want old porsches i'm a poor person that wants an old porsche right yeah <laughs> what will they do for me <laughs> Nothing. The answer Where's is nothing. Where's Singer at? Should I should I, I admit they're, that? They're, is that they're, Dallas? Is that Houston? Man, these are beautiful. Yeah. How did I get on this? Damn. Dude, they're they're millions of dollars, bro. They're 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 not for you and me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame. It is a shame. It should be for everybody. And that but and that goes kind of goes back to my point. I'm looking forward to the first manufacturer that comes out and it says, Okay, we're gonna do one car and it's gonna be for the enthusiast and it's gonna be the ultimate enthusiast vehicle. And not something like an aerial atom or, you know, like like yeah. an actual yeah. car, yeah. you know, something with seats and a roof. So these guys like Resto Mod old Porsches. Essentially, yeah. But they, they, they remake everything. It's all new. It's not old. So like all the toggles and switches mm-hmm. are re-engineered to feel like the old ones, but look better <laughs> and function. Beautiful. It's insane. You can get lost looking at Singer Porsches, dude. It's it's <laughs> out of control. Now in the no podcast. no no. Like, oh my god. For sure, if if I if somebody came to me and said you can have unlimited money mm-hmm. to buy any car you want on planet Earth, it would be a Singer Porsche for me. I would go get a black Singer Porsche uh, with a tan interior. Oh my god. And you see, like, look at this. Yeah, I mean, they put like crazy. Oh my god. They're beautiful. The attention to detail there is unmatched how do you and i get into something that's so like captivating like this i don't know like why when i was growing up nobody told me like hey you could do something cool or you could work for a bank (laughs) 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 yeah yeah i know why didn't anybody encourage me to do this that's a shortcoming on my parents shame on you mom and dad for shame for shame past parents they probably knew i wouldn't be successful at it (laughs) god Stone Canyon. If you have a chance, pull up Singer. Look for the Stone Canyon. It's a gorgeous navy blue. I wonder what the price is on it. Don't look at the price. Well, it's, it's just gonna a shatter. It's going to break your heart, man. It's just a right gallery. Now, right now, that vehicle is attainable to you in your mind space. <laughs> you know, like, ah, it can't be too much. You know what's sad, though, is like I could bring that home, and my wife would be like, eh. She would have no idea. Or I could bring home a Honda Civic, and she'd be like, eh. Yeah. It wouldn't matter to her. No. It would only matter to me and like six other people in mm-hmm. Central Ohio. No, I think more than six people would appreciate it. A singer going down the road. All right, guys. That's another episode in the books. Joyride Pod. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. If you like what you hear, please like, follow, subscribe. Rob, what are our platforms? Uh, well, you can follow us on Instagram at uh, Joyride Pod. You can hit us up if you want to contact the show, ask us any sort of questions, disagree with anything. It's all good. Send us an email at contactjoyridepod at gmail.com. Um, and uh, you can check out our website. It's joyridepod.com. Excellent. Special thanks to our episode sponsor, High Bank Distillery. Please go and check them out at highbankco.com. Till next time, enjoy the ride.